What's up everybody? I'm Coach Tyler with Fencer's Edge and today we are going to be going over how to flick in both foil and epee fencing. So the flick attack is a great way to get around parries and hit targets that are hard to protect or hard to defend against. Now the flick is a very difficult move to perform and it requires a lot of grip strength and it requires excellent timing and distance control as do most things in fencing. So if you would like to see some exercises on how you can improve your grip strength, check out my Patreon page because I will be doing a Patreon exclusive video for all my Patreon supporters on seven different workouts that you can do to improve your grip strength. So check that out, head over to my Patreon page and consider becoming a supporter of my channel. So the first and most important part is the distance at which you are trying to flick at. So if I am too far away, obviously I'm not going to hit, okay? If I'm too close, I'm not going to be able to land my flick either. So I want to find that sweet spot distance with my target area so when I go for my flick, I'm making contact with my opponent, with the tip of the blade and not with the blade. So what's creating the flicking action is getting my point traveling quickly and then immediately squeezing and stopping at the correct point. So it's much like if you were sitting in a car and you accelerated really fast and then all of a sudden you slam on the brakes, your upper body is going to fall forward in that car. Uh, especially if you're not wearing a seatbelt, which you should always do, wear a seatbelt. Um, <laughs> but, so that's the same actual motion that I'm trying to create with my blade. I'm trying to get speed movement out of my blade, and then at the precise moment, I'm making a stopping motion and squeezing with my fingers and squeezing with my forearm to create a hard stop which allows my point to continue to bend forward and hit at this angle here, all right? So when I make my flick, there's a few crucial parts. I want to make sure that my wrist is higher than the target area that I'm trying to hit, okay? If I'm trying to make my flick and my wrist is lower than the target that I'm trying to hit, it's not going to work. So if I'm going for the shoulder of my opponent, I want to make sure that my wrist is higher than the target area that I'm trying to hit, okay? So this takes a lot of practice um, to find that sweet spot, because if I stop too early and reach too high, I'm going to fall short, okay? If I stop too late, I'm just going to land flat. Okay, and if I stop with my arm too low, I'm just going to land flat. So I want to try and find that sweet spot so that when my blade reaches that downward motion, it is bending and hitting with the point. Okay, so that squeezing motion is really important and it requires a lot of good grip strength. So you're getting the blade moving and then getting that speed of the blade going and then squeezing to complete the action and let the point continue through, okay? So again, I'm squeezing tightly and flexing my forearm muscle here to complete that flicking action and to get the blade and my point moving quickly. All right, so for foil fencing, there's a few different target areas that you can hit with the flick, okay? So you can go for the upper shoulder here, which is what I've been demonstrating, okay? You can also hit the bottom hip here with the flick. So for this one, I'm gonna move my hand out to the side and make sure that when I finish, my wrist is past where I want to hit my target area, okay? So my wrist isn't going to be in line. If it's in line and I try to flick, I'm just going to land flat and I'm not going to push in that button on my foil. So I want to make sure that when I'm going for this target, I'm pushing my hand out 
and squeezing and stopping at the same time. Okay? So for this one, my palm is rotating towards the ground. My wrist is pulling back. And then I'm creating that speed and stopping at the finish. All right. So the other good target area to flick to is to the chest. Okay, so this time I'm going to turn my palm up towards the sky, all right, and I'm going to flick here. Again, I'm going to make sure that my wrist is outside the area that I'm trying to hit. If my wrist is in the center of my opponent's body and I try to flick here, I'm just going to land flat. So I want to make sure that I push my wrist to the outside and again, I'm creating that speed by pulling the wrist back. And then at the last minute, at the proper timing, I'm squeezing and stopping the blade momentum and letting my point continue to travel at that speed to bend and complete the flick. So because the flick attack is such a difficult uh, action to perform, and because it's such a low percentage um, action. Um, and what I mean by low percentage, if I were to sit here and make a hundred touches to the chest directly with my point, I would expect to get a hundred out of a hundred. Whereas if I am flicking, as you can see, some of them are landing and some of them aren't. Okay, so it's a lower percentage chance that you're going to score that flick than, you, uh, than it would be if you went in with a direct attack. So because it is a lower percentage action to make, and there is a higher probability of you either landing flat or short, or just not hitting hard enough to depress the point of your weapon, um, I would highly recommend that if you are going for this action, that you always have a second action ready to go, ready to defend yourself. So that could look like if I'm going for a flick to the shoulder against my opponent, where I'm really exposed is underneath. So after I perform this flick, I should immediately come down and try to clear maybe with an eight parry or with a six parry and protect myself. So I could always be ready to follow up with a parry action after I perform the flick. I could also go for a quick remise after I perform the flick. So if I miss and I don't score that touch, I have a backup action ready to go. So you should never perform the flick 100% expecting that it should hit and just uh, make the flick and then stop. You always want to have a second intention action to follow that up with. So if I go for the flick, I am immediately coming for a parry or I'm immediately going for another remise. All right, so when you are practicing your flicks, it's a really good idea to get comfortable with adding movement and feeling the distance at which you need to make the flick from. So um, when practicing, I recommend doing it standing still to begin with, just to get the action down, and then add an advance. So you're practicing with making an advance in scoring the flick to feel how far you need to step in in order to score the touch. Then you can start practicing it with a lunge. Okay? Then you can start practicing it with Advanced lunge. Maybe balester lunge. Maybe double advanced lunge. So a good workout routine that I would recommend is doing three flicks to each target. Starting with standing still, then adding an advance. So three touches to each target with advance then three with a lunge, then three with advanced lunge, then three with double advanced lunge, and three with a balestra lunge. Okay, so for FA fencing, most of your direct attack flicks 
are going to happen to your opponent's arm. You're not going to want to try and make a direct attack with a flick to the body in Epe, because in order to perform the flick, you're need, you need to pull the arm back, okay? And when you pull the arm back, you're really exposing yourself to a counterattack there. So it's best to perform the flick from a safer distance in Epe and just go for the arm, unless you're making a parry first, where you're deflecting your, or capturing your opponent's blade before you're making a flick, and that's when it's okay to make a flick to the, to the body. Um, to the hand, it's a little bit safer to perform the flick because when you're pulling, you're outside of your opponent's range until you've completed that action, okay? So, uh, for practicing the epe flicks to the arm in epe, um, what I like to do is set up a table, something about arm height, um, and use something soft like a rolled up towel. Here I'm using a yoga mat, but you want to um, have something that's about arm height, and you don't want it to be really hard because you don't want to be damaging your point when you're practicing these flicks, or uh, you don't want to be damaging what it is that you're flicking. Uh, so choose something that is a little bit on the softer side and that is not going to get destroyed if you are constantly practicing your flicks on it. Okay? So for the FA flicks to the arm, okay? For this one, I'm going to pull the wrist up, lifting with my wrist and lifting my point up. And then to complete the flick, I'm going to accelerate the point down and squeeze and lift with my wrist at the same time. So when I complete the action, I'm squeezing right at the precise moment and creating a very hard stop so my point continues to travel, but this part of my blade stays nice and solid and comes to a complete stop. That will allow the point to bend down and hit the target area that I'm trying to hit. Okay, so that is the flick for on top of the wrist. I can also flick to the side of my opponent's wrist, okay, either outside or inside, okay? If I'm attacking outside the wrist, I'm going to rotate my palm so my palm is facing down, and when I make the flick, I'm going to extend my arm out to the side. And when I'm attacking inside the wrist, inside if I'm fencing a right-handed fencer, outside if I'm fencing a left-handed fencer, um, I'm going to rotate my palm up towards the sky for this flick. And again, I want to push my wrist out to the side when I'm making the flick. So when you are practicing these flicks, I find that it can be really helpful to hook up to a scoring machine. That way you can tell if what you're doing is actually registering an attack, okay? So I find that that's really helpful when practicing. That way I can tell if I'm hitting flat like this and there's nothing happening, I know that I need to make an adjustment so that when I make the flick, I'm actually registering a touch. So the other really important thing with making flicks to the arm in FA fencing is the timing at which you are lifting your wrist to make the flicking action. Now, most of the time in FA fencing, when you're flicking to the arm, it's not going to be from a standstill. You're probably either going to be moving in with an advance or you're going to be making the flick with a lunge, okay? So the timing of when you are pulling your wrist and the movement is really important, all right? If I preface my attack by lifting my wrist before I step, then I'm telegraphing what I'm trying to do, and I'm actually giving my opponent a really easy target to hit underneath my wrist with the counterattack. 
So when you make that flick, you want to make sure that you're pulling with the step forward, okay? So as I'm stepping forward, I'm pulling at that time, okay? I'm not uh, pulling and then stepping forward with the flick. As you can see, that really messed up my timing anyway. <laughs> so most of your flicks to the body are gonna happen with a parry. So uh, for example, there's a few different actions that you can make here. I can make a parry four and then flick to the shoulder here. So for this action, I'm gonna take my four a little bit wider and then as I flick in, I'm going to push my arm out to the side, squeezing with those fingers, feeling that timing of when to stop. So again, four and flip. Okay? I can also take six and flick to the shoulder. So on this one, I'm gonna lift my blade up, capturing the blade. And then for the flick, I'm gonna lift my hand up over where I want to hit and make that squeeze to complete the flick. I can also take six and come around to the chest. So turning my wrist, palm up towards the sky and flicking in. Again, for this one, I'm gonna push my wrist to the outside of my opponent to complete that action. All right, everybody, that does it for this video. I hope you found this information helpful and I hope it helps you score that winning touch. As always, please remember to like, share, subscribe, and comment below. And if you are really enjoying these videos, please consider checking out my Patreon page and becoming a patron supporter of this channel. Any amount that you can contribute will greatly help me produce more awesome content for you, so make sure to check that out. Until next time, everybody, have fun, work hard, and practice. <laughs>